we welcome you into the second hour of America's Forum. I'm John Bachman, filling in for J.D. Hayworth today. Miranda Khan, right alongside me here mm -hmm. on the set. Religious freedom laws yeah. in Arkansas and Indiana and elsewhere are sure to be previews of these political fault lines we're going to see in 2016. Gay marriage, certainly one of those fault lines. Polls show Americans' viewpoints on gay marriage in flux right now. Yeah, the Washington Times writes that the issue shows just how difficult it will be for candidates to navigate their party primaries without harming themselves for the general election. I believe that was the Washington Post, but a lot of folks are saying that same go, exact Washington thing Post. here. We're going to bring in uh, two of our guests to discuss this issue this hour. We're joined right now from Washington, D.C. by former Congressman Mark Foley and Newsmax contributor Larry Elder joining us from Los Angeles. Gentlemen, it's great to have both of you with us. I want to quickly start with what uh, the former whip of the House, Tom DeLay, said on the Steve Malzberg show talking about gay marriage. Let's take a listen. This isn't about discrimination. Uh, we, we love uh, uh, people that uh, uh, have chosen to be homosexuals. Uh, the problem is we abhor the sin. The sin. So, so, yes, we, when, I, when I have a business and some gay person walks in, unidentified, by the way, there's no way you can tell it unless he tells you, uh, then I'm going to serve him. Well, there you go, Mark. I'll leave this question for you because we've talked about this in the past. You never chose to be gay. You don't look at it as a sin. Is Tom DeLay part of the problem here for the GOP? He's not part of the problem, but I'm glad you used that word as he did. I didn't choose this, nor do anyone else. The thought that someone would belittle me because of a sexual orientation is the discrimination. You know, there are a few things you can choose to be. You can choose to be racist. You can choose to be anti-Semitic. You don't choose to be gay. Trust me, it's not a fun experiment. But at the same time, I think what is troubling is when people quantify a religious feeling and suggesting you can pillarize or demonize a homosexual because it's your religious belief is strange to me. Uh, the, the Stations of the Cross, love thy neighbor. You know, s some of the most important precepts of our faith are to love your neighbor, not subjectively or discriminatorily. So I will hope and do hope that the Indiana experiment rings loud and clear. Mike Pence was a dark horse for the presidency in 2016. He's now playing damage control to reinstitute a loving, friendly Indiana to tourists. He's having a difficult time, and I think when you demonize people based on something either you're fearful of or don't know about uh, is a troubling thing for 2016 as we hope to recapture the White House. Larry, go ahead. Well, my analysis is entirely different from Mark's analysis. As far as I'm concerned, the question we need to ask ourselves is real simple. Do I own my business or does the state own my business? And if I own my business, I have the right to exclude or include whomever I want for whatever reason I want. I'm a black man. Uh, if a Klansman walked into my floral shop and said, the Imperial Wizard just died, please do his funeral, I tell him to get the blank out of my shop. And it seems to me that uh, if the Westboro Baptist Church comes into a gay-owned t-shirt shop and says, please print a couple of messages, one from Romans and one from Leviticus on t-shirts that are anti-homosexual, I have the right to tell him to go down the street and get his t-shirts done by somebody else. That, to me, is what we ought to be talking about. Individual freedom, freedom of association, and property rights. Well, I think what... Yeah, but Larry, you're just supposing a Klansman with an orientation that you're born into. All I'm suggesting, you do have every right. I am all for free enterprise. But when you start the premise about, I'll discriminate against any number of people coming in your door, the one thing I can guarantee you, you won't be in business long. That's exactly right, Mark. The free market will take care of that. Look at Chick-fil-A. You had the CEO simply giving donations to organizations that support traditional marriage. He got hammered. If I'm so stupid as to exclude people because of their sexual orientation, because they're Jewish or whatever it is, I will get hammered by the marketplace. Let the market decide. The and government ought not be making these kinds of decisions. The civil rights protests in the 60s were about government mandated segregation, laws on the books. And what Martin Luther King wanted was people to look in their hearts and be better people. He didn't want laws imposed to require you to deal with people that you don't want to deal with. Larry, if the free hand of the market is going to come into play here, why do we need these laws in the books in the first place? 
We do not. As far as I'm concerned, we don't. And I think that Pence and Asa Hutchinson headed for the hills the way Republicans often do when they're accused of being bigots, because Republicans are deathly afraid of being called racist or sexist or bigoted against homosexuals. That again shows you the sensitivity here and why businesses would not wholesalely uh, exclude people, because they're going to get hammered in the marketplace. Mark certainly wouldn't patronize a business like that. I wouldn't patronize a business like that. Nobody I know would patronize businesses like that. And to the extent that there are some thugs that would, don't you want to know who they are and where they go and let's let them have their own little place and let their own little shop what's wrong with that well we'll see they wouldn't be in business for long i think we can all agree on that aspect more to talk about here on this subject gentlemen we'll be back with miranda khan here in a moment as well we'll talk about Rand paul and his view on domestic issues a little bit different something to discuss and we welcome you back to america's forum john bachman and for jd hayward today mm -hmm. alongside miranda khan also with us for this segment, former Congressman Mark Foley and Larry Elder, Newsmax contributor, joining us from the West Coast. We mentioned Rand Paul announcing he's going to run for president today. But, Mark, let's start with you. Rand Paul is pretty out there when it comes to foreign policy. He's backing this deal with Iran, if not directly, indirectly. GOP hawks, the, the establishment wing of, these, of, of the hawk party, are, are really furious about his run. Uh, do you think this might backfire on Rand Paul, though, because attitudes in this country are changing and it started changing, really, when we started seeing ISIS execute people with cutting their heads off. Well, that's the thing. When ISIS started rearing its head, and this just didn't occur overnight, this has been going on for several years, people now recognize homeland security, internationally security, are very well linked. I like Rand Paul, and I think we've got a tremendous stable of candidates. So I'm not going to discourage nor necessarily encourage any one participant, but I can tell you we're going to have a dynamic debate. We're at least a party that has multiple choices. Right now, the Democrats seem to be locked and fixated on one. Uh, but when it comes to foreign policy, this kind of notion that you can be a dove, that you can disband the military, that you no longer have to worry about the threats in the Middle East, just look at what's happening in Yemen. Without the United States involvement, the world will become unraveled. So I think Rand needs to be a little bit respectful of the fact Freedom isn't free. It's not without cost and consequence, but it absolutely is a fundamental principle of the United States. Larry, go ahead. I, I absolutely agree with everything he just now said. Uh, my problem with Rand Paul uh, is if the whole world were libertarian, uh, we wouldn't have these kinds of problems. Unfortunately, the whole world is not libertarian, and Rand Paul has made the kind of attack against the war in Iraq by linking it to Cheney and Halliburton that you'd hear from some talk show host on MSNBC. Uh, it's ridiculous, the idea that you don't like the war and therefore you're going to impugn Dick Cheney's motives. Uh, I was horrified by that. And that's the kind of thing that I think scares people. We live in a world where there are a lot of bad people, and a lot of people like Rand Paul and President Barack Obama believe naively, if you look at people, look them in the eye, and tell them that you have good intentions, they'll respond in kind. They won't. Well, a couple other issues I want to bring up, too. We got Chuck Schumer saying he wants to review this deal with Iran. And also you have the president over the weekend saying that Iran does not have to say Israel has a right to exist, which is really one of the main th one of the three things that Benjamin Netanyahu wanted in this whole deal your response to both of those uh, congressman Foley well if we give up on Israel or don't provide them the cover then we'll give up the world Israel needs our help and they need our protection and the notion that somehow we can negotiate with Iran and hope and pray that Israel remains intact as a state as a free nation is scary to me and I like the fact that Larry mentioned naive that's what we elected six years ago, a naive president who believed if you just shook hands and made Muslims feel welcome, that we changed the world calculus. We have naively walked into what is the most dangerous period in the United States history, both domestically and internationally, because of naivete. I want to ask you, Larry Elder, specifically about, if we can go back to Rand Paul again, he's been trying for the last few years to get the black vote. How successful has Rand Paul been at doing that? Well, he's gone to uh, inner city. He's given a lot of talks. He's shown up, which is what I've always re re uh, recommended that Republicans do. Again, my problem with the way Rand Paul has done it, for example, he wants the war on drugs called off. I want the war on drugs called off. But Rand Paul has suggested that the reason for the war on drugs uh, is, uh, is a racist intent. 
Now, the disproportionate number of blacks that have been affected by the war on drugs is one thing, but to act as if the intent was racist uh, feeds into that whole narrative that the man is out to get us, cops are out to get black people, uh, the system's out to get black people, and I don't think that that helps uh, with initiative and achievement uh, and the kinds of things that one needs to do to get to the middle class. Yeah, you don't have specifically mentioned race in this issue. This is something, obviously, that the black community cares about. Also, uh, Rand Paul making the play for school choice and on this prison reform issue, uh, Mark, do you think those things with Rand Paul are really going to have much of an effect because they seem like sort of fringe issues when the big topics folks want to talk about foreign policy mm -hmm. with this president and also the economy because it's still not as good as it should be? I have found in all my years in government, African Americans care about their families, their economy, jobs and opportunity. They really don't care if you're a spokesperson for one side or the other. They want independent liberties and freedom. I think that a uh, Rand Paul uh, type of candidacy, much like his father's, is going to attract a younger voter. Younger voters do not necessarily have a historical reference point as to what this world's been through. They don't remember World War II. They don't remember Vietnam. They certainly don't remember Korea. And that's a good they point, Mark. Barely we'll leave it there, I want to let some of the voters today, 9-11. I want to so give Larry a chance because we're running out of time very here of. to wrap up. Those are good points. Go ahead, Larry. you got 30 seconds I'm left. I'm simply going to say to Mark, Mark, uh, since President Obama has come into office, the black poverty rate has increased, not decreased, increased. And people like Rand Paul, I think, are going to be very successful in talking about the economic policies that the left wing has engaged in that have damaged the black community and damaged the black family. It's the economy, stupid, right? That's Economics what wins, say. pandering doesn't. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Former Congressman Mark Foley, he'll be back with us on, on, this, on Newsmax TV, we can bet, but it was good to talk to him as well. Larry Edel will be around with us for yep. the entire hour. More to come here on America's Forum. We're back right after this.